Oh, there's more! What? How could they do this to people? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are playing Hero. It is an Atari 2600 classic. This is a platformer adventure rescue type game, and this is the first 2600 game that I have played in pretty much a year. It's not quite a year, it's very, very close, so I think the last game I really played was Dig Dug. I think I think that was the last game. It might have been Pitfall. I can't remember which came last, but definitely it has been a long time, a, a remarkably long time when you consider my quest here to play through the 1001 games. you think I would encounter more Atari games, but the issue is that a lot of games that came out on Atari came out on things like the Amiga, the Commodore, on DOS, and I've been mixing up the consoles, and I just kind of realized I haven't really been playing any Atari. So today we're going to correct that. We're going to be playing some Atari. So HERO, H-E-R-O, it is a, an acronym that stands for Helicopter Emergency Rescue Operation. As you can see, you play uh, some dude with a helicopter strapped to his back, lasers coming out of his face, and a bunch of dynamite. That's what those sparkly little birthday candles are. And he is on a mission to save, I guess, tired scientists... They're just kind of like chilling in caves waiting for someone to show up and uh, rescue them. So that's, that's what we're going to be doing. The guy's name, though, is Roderick Hero. And so I think when your job, the job you take as, as an adult is the acronym Hero and your last name is Hero. It's kind of like this job was made just for you, right? I mean, like what other job could you really have here? So anyway, I've been talking enough, giving us a little bit of an intro here. Let's go ahead and hop into this game right now. So with the Atari, I always have to play with the switches along the top to figure out um, how to start the game. And I did some playing around before I started this video. And here we go. So now I'm going to be wrestling with the Atari controller the whole time that we're talking here. Oh, and here's our first scientist. He was... Literally, there was, there was like, he could have crawled out of this. There was, there was nothing preventing him from leaving. He was just, he looks tired to me. I don't know. I feel like these scientists are kind of lazy. We're supposed to be saving them. They're in trouble or whatever. But, like, literally that guy was just hanging out waiting for us. Uh, and there was no reason why he couldn't himself, save himself. So you move left and right with left and right. You press the button to shoot. And apparently when you shoot, you can break through these weak walls. Oh yeah, there it goes. It just takes a hell of a long time. So we're supposed to be using dynamite for this. My guy didn't get the memo. He's going to try and break this one with just his eyeballs. And his eyes have the power. But we're going to use dynamite on that one because why the hell not? going to kill this and this. Boom. Nothing's going to survive. Like, what's going on, dude? Are you just depressed? Come on, man. Come on, there there really wasn't that much... There wasn't much trouble to get down to you. <laughs> the other thing I like about this game is... Once you get down to the... Oh, God! <laughs> once you get down to the guys who, like, need help... It's not like you take them back to the surface. You just kind of, like... He gives you a thumbs up and, like... That's that. Oh, crap. <laughs> I fell in that hole. Uh, it's kind of like he's just like... Ah, he just wanted a friend. Okay, so you can go up and down with the helicopter, by the way. See, so you can, you can fly if you want. You can legitimately use it as a helicopter. Most of the time, you're just sort of floating downward, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, look at that guy. Okay, we saved you. Now what? Okay, nothing. So I guess, I guess in my character's mind, when it comes to saving people, his definition of saving people is just kind of keeping them company while they die. Or maybe he's showing up and killing them. Maybe this is not like a rescue mission, but this is just like, uh, he's coming for you. It, we're, we're like a, an informal Terminator. We're coming to kill the scientists to silence them. Oh, God. And the monster silenced us. Oh, God. <laughs> so a lot of this game, I guess, is memory. Oh, we're done. We're done. Game over. Well, that's not going to do. We're going to go ahead and try those early levels one more time, see if we can get by them. The nice thing about this game is at the, the settings menu at the beginning, you can choose what level to start on. Okay, here's here's the laziest scientist of them all. So we can start on level 5, 10, 8. Uh, I don't know what all the options are, but literally if we can't get very far in this game, we'll have the option of starting on higher levels. So that's kind of nice, actually. Now the controls, the controls for this game... They're pretty remarkable, but at the same time, they're a little sticky because they're Atari controls. So you may be wondering, how how on earth uh, can this game seemingly have so many options? Because for an Atari game, damn it, I dodged the first thing up there and died by the second. 
But for an Atari game, like, I'm moving around, I'm dropping dynamite, I'm shooting lasers, I'm flying at some point. I'm not really flying for you guys. Here, look, I'll fly for you. Wee, I'm flying, and now I'll go down. So yeah, you can do all these cool things. How's that possible? Well, it's pretty simple, actually. You go left and right with the joystick, you press down to drop the dynamite, the button shoots, and when you're floating, you can sort of press up to uh, continue to fly. So yeah, pretty, pretty impressive, damn it. Impressive controls, I would say, for being an Atari game. Now, you know, it is it is still tricky to control. I, I n have never found the Atari joystick to be... Oh, nice try down there. That thing was going to kill me. I've never found the Atari joystick to be as responsive as, say, like a Super Nintendo or... Oops. Even like a Sega Genesis controller or a Nintendo controller. Like, it's just... It's just not... How, okay, hold on. How do I... How do I go up? No, no, I need to go up now. <laughs> go. Oh no, see, okay, here's here's one problem. How the hell do you, how the hell do you go up? Oh, uh, there we go. So I have to be going, oh, crap. So if you're going left or right, you can also press up, I guess, and then fly. Okay, so yeah, it's, they really made the best, you know, they, they did the best they could with the limited controls, but it is still a little tricky uh, and a little weird and the controls are not terribly responsive. So, ooh, another screen. I didn't know you could go left and right. That's something. Get away from me. Oh, I landed on, okay, that is lava. We're kind of like in Minecraft zone now. Okay, crap. Okay, let's start on level two, which starts us on level five. Damn it, <laughs> we blew ourselves up. This is what I mean about like the controls being a little sloppy. I was trying to move to the left. The game just wouldn't let me. Oh my god. All right, well, well strap yourselves in, people. Uh, this is this is how it's going to go from now on. Levels are getting trickier, and that means oh god. We're going to be like just just inches from death the whole way. Oh god, this is does not look nice. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I got it. I got some moves. I don't have like a ton of moves, but I have some moves. Oh yeah, we got to this scientist. This is Greg Greg was having a rough day. There was a lot of lava and bats bothering him all day. So it was kind of funny that you used dynamite to blow up walls of lava. I guess walls of lava didn't get the memo that they're not supposed to be blown up by dynamite. Um. Ah! You knew you had to kind of float over that guy, but uh, my floating skills are not where they need to be in this game. It's also kind of funny that, like, he... Wait. Oh, crap. Get out of here. It's also kind of funny how, like, he shoots lasers out of his face. Like, he doesn't have a gun. It's kind of like, what is this? Is this Cyclops from, like, the X-Men? Like, this is his day job, is rescuing people from mines? Okay, hold on. Fly! 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 Okay, well, walk over the pit. That also works. Oh, no! Don't fall back in, you idiot! Ah, uh, we died on level six. <laughs> I like how in these old Atari games, it's like the Activision logo is all over them. Activision, of course, being one of the early uh, early uh, developers. that I think a third-party developer for Atari games. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, this game came out near the end of the life of Atari. It was sort of at the end of its, its run. Which explains why it was more advanced than uh, most of the other Atari games at the time. Okay. Getting into a groove here. I feel like this is the type of game that if if you did just like spend some time and memorize it, you could totally speed run this. Boom. Yeah, we didn't die once there. What are my extra lives? Okay, see there's dynamite in a row down there. What the row above, it's extra lives. What am I looking at? Oh, are they little helicopter men? Okay, they're little helicopter men. I think that's what it is. Alright. How did all these scientists find themselves in... Oh, here we go. Ah, oh, damn it. In, a, in this, like, weird situation where they were all... Like, they were all scattered. They weren't just all hanging out at the same spot in the mine. Ah, get up there. Go. All right, there we go. And... And again, I don't understand how they're trapped. They seem to have given up on life. Maybe this is just like, oh crap. The scientists are like super depressed. 
Man, you know what would be really helpful in this game is a jump button. I appreciate that Atari was trying to keep things simple with like the one button joystick, but like, oh my god. Oh well, at least we have one more life here. I always wondered why Atari didn't just add one more button. Like, what, would it have been beyond the processing powers of the Atari 2600 to have two buttons? I mean, probably not, because they have, they, 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 it's able to process, damn it, two controllers at the same time. So maybe you could have arranged it so that, let's, let's jump ahead to level nine. Maybe you could have arranged it on the Atari so that one player games, uh, you could use two or three or four buttons, uh, but two player games, you could only use one button on each controller. That would be fine because then at least like a game like this, it's single player, oh crap, could have like a lot more complexity to it. Oh my god, this is brutal. Okay, don't. Oh, don't go too far up, you idiot. Wow. Man, it is not hard to pass levels in this game, but the difficulty ramps up like a mofo. All right, here we go. I don't know how, like how are we supposed to get down here? I wonder. Let's try and place dynamite. Nope, that doesn't do anything. So that's just a death trap. You're just not supposed to go that way. Okay, ugh. Man, if the controls, okay. I, I went into this game expecting to be able to say something nice about Atari's controls because the game does have very complex controls in terms of all the capabilities. Oh. But I'm having a real hard time with these Atari, this Atari joystick. It's just like not responsive. And oh no, float over this way. I guess if you fall in the water, I think you die. Oh God, float. Okay, here we go. Oh God. Oh yeah, this is this is gonna work out well for us. Uh, go up, shoot the thing. <laughs> like I'm struggling to fly. Oh, are you kidding me? What the hell? This 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 became like very challenging very fast. Okay. We're we're totally going to run out of power here, but I hope the scientist is behind this wall. I don't think it uses more of your power to shoot. I think power just slowly runs down using my face lasers. Like where are those lasers coming from in the context of this game? Oh, there's more. What how could they do this to people? Where is the scientist? How did the scientist get here? Oh man. We ran out of power. I saw him. He was right there. <laughs> you kidding me? Oh man. Uh, should we try that again? I guess let's try that. Oops. Let's try that one more time. And we'll see what some of the higher levels are like in this game. I've, I thought I would do better at this game than I seem to be doing, which is okay. <laughs> Flippin' hell. It's okay that we're not doing as well as we thought, but... Oh my god. But it just means... Oh my god, okay, we're, we're, not, we're not getting far. We're not, we're not passing this level. Oh my god. Wow. Uh, turns out I am not the hero that we thought we needed. Let's... You know what? Since we had such an easy time at that level, let's just see what's on this higher level here. Oh my god. Stay away. Well, that wasn't too bad. Oh, what the hell? Oh, we can't we can't go through there. Oh, and there's a stupid bug right above us. Okay, I thought this I thought this was okay, but it turns out it's really not. Oh my god. Okay, we're just gonna reset this. I gotta see what that room looked like. Go down over here. Yes. Okay. So I think we can go up here. Oh my god. Can we just go through the wall? Oh no, it just kills us. So we gotta dynamite this. Man, this game got brutal real fast. And we gotta go down here. All right, and kill this. Oh my god. I assume we go this way. Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> Where are you, scientists? Where are you? Come to me real quick. I am not gonna last much longer here, buddy. You gotta come to me. You gotta put it you gotta put in the minimal amount of effort to save your own life here. Oh man. I don't even know oh, where to go, which direction to go. Oh my god. Alright, let's just keep ramping the difficulty up. 
my face lasers need targets. I don't know where my face lasers are coming from, but they they need uh they they need recipients of the glory of my face laser. I must shoot my face into something. Imagine you could look at something so intensely that you could literally fire lasers out of your face. And imagine that you also were complete Ugh, wussy when it came to lavas and bugs touching you. He has the same response when like a bat touches him as when he lands on lava. It kills him just as quickly. What kind of a man is as vulnerable to lava as he is to random bats or spiders touching him? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay, let, let's revert back to a slightly easier level and just see how we do on these easy levels. Now, now that we've been through the grinder here for a bit, we can come back, and these are no problem. The guy's like, thumbs up, dude. Thanks for saving me. And you're like, no problem. Well, see ya. We just leave him in the cave. I presume he just dies of hunger eventually. Or maybe he asphyxiates because there's very little oxygen down here. He's like, oh, I, I thought you were going to take me to the surface, but... I'm like, nope. I'm just here to, to make sure you're, you're doing okay, and then I go off to another cave. It's my job. I'm Roderick Hero. The work never ends for old Roddy. Roddy Hero. Uh, this way... I feel like these early levels suddenly now are easier. Now that I've gone through the harder levels. I think every 20,000 points, in fact, you also get an extra life. So there's something to look forward to in this game. But yeah, as a concept, this game is really reminiscent. really reminds me of Pixel Junk Shooter, which is a, net, a game that I played a long time ago. Uh, there's a sequel, Pixel Junk Shooter 2, which is basically just an expansion of the original game, but similar concept. If you haven't... Uh, if you never heard of it, it's basically a, uh, you're in a... A spaceship and you're kind of going around rescuing scientists much in the same way that you are here going through a ca uh, cave system and there's bad guys and so on so it's actually in fact now that I think about it, it's virtually the same game just modernized I wonder if the developers come here I wonder if the developers of shooter were inspired by this game in any way or even knew about it or whether it was just coincidence oh, god damn it all right, we're so close to 20,000. I want to get the extra life just to show that it's possible, but I don't think it's going to do us any good. Especially once you get to level five. I mean, you might as well just start the game on level five. Come on, we're so close. We can taste that extra life. We're going to suck your life out, scientist. That guy we did not save. We just, uh, we used a dark ritual to steal his soul and store it in our backpack in case we needed his life force. That is what became of that scientist. Oh, God. I tried to move there. I'm telling you, it's the joysticks. Okay, fly. There we go. And now go down. So you don't have to move to fly. You just hold up. So you just have to hold up for, like, a while, and eventually you will fly. That's how flying works in this game. See? There you go. So do that. Go up. There we go. Kill this. What? What is that, anyway? It's like a... It's not so these are bats. So what are those that those things, those other things that kind of move left to right on the screen? Are they like spiders or something? Oh god. We're not gonna live long enough to find out. Okay, this is it. This is it. Like what was that thing? That's the thing I was talking about. What is that thing? I assume it's a no well that's a spider. So okay, spiders hang from the webs. Bats are fly around like bats. What were those other things? Are they like cave crabs or something? Some kind of species I don't know about? I don't know. This game kind of reminds me of like a game that I might have liked when I was a kid, but I might not have. I don't know. You know what's funny is when I was little, I was always fascinated by arcade games uh, and video games in general, damn it. And that it's, it's interesting for me to look back at that fascination because when I think about the games I had in my house, like Atari games and stuff, most Atari games I kind of found a little... I don't know what the word I'm looking for here is. Oh, crap. It, it's sort of like it's you don't want to play them for very long. Like, this game is, like, kind of interesting, but, like, it's, it's, it's no Mario World. Like, Mario World, I would sit down and I would get lost in that game and, like, play it for, like, hours and hours and hours. This game, I kind of feel like I, uh, I'm reaching my limit with it already. What I've been playing it for, like, 20 minutes. Not even, right? So, 
And I don't feel like this is new. Oh, get over there. Come on. Crappy Atari controller. Like, even when I was a kid, I think my favorite Atari game was, like, Pitfall because it felt like there was a world to explore. It was the most kind of Mario-like game. And this was before Mario, so I didn't necessarily know what I was missing. But it's like a lot of a lot of these really, really old video games, I kind of find sometimes are a bit repetitive. And, like, they feel... Like, this doesn't feel like a game that I think I personally would have played over and over again. I feel like I, I would tap out pretty quickly in terms of the game. It's almost like there's two there's two issues here. One is that it's kind of finicky and hard. Damn it. But two is that I'm going through it way too quick. You know, it's like if this were Mario, I would not be on level seven after like 30 seconds. Like I feel each level here is remarkably small. The challenge is high and the controls are a little sticky. Not to say that this is, you know, not necessarily a good game, especially for its era. Especially, again, as I've said, the complexity in here is pretty remarkable for an Atari 2600 game. But just for Atari games in general, I feel like they all kind of had this issue where... Come on, let me do this. Okay. That's just like a, a snake who lives in the wall and likes to stick his head out. Boom. Oh, yeah, we're living up. Oh, we're, we're dead. Uh, I should probably start wrapping this up soon because I feel like we're just we're we're just going through this uh, and it's becoming very repetitive here. But I mean that's that's the point I'm trying to make with these old Atari games is like it's weird. Like I don't know why I love video games so much because it's not like I feel all that differently today and like I just didn't know any better. Like even back then, many games felt quite re uh, repetitive to me. But uh, you know, and I don't think I played them for much more time than uh, than I would play this now. Like, after about half an hour, I'm sure I would tire of this game, even though it's pretty advanced for an Atari game. So I don't know. I don't know how I got through that initial hump of finding games slightly repetitive, still enjoying them somehow on some level, and getting to the point where, like, you know, you're playing, like, Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game on Nintendo, and, like, Mario Brothers 3, and, like, you know, good video games that really draw you in. There's a lot to explore, and you're not blowing through levels in, like, 30 seconds. It's like you got to earn each level, and there's power-ups, and there's multiple buttons and strategies. I mean, again, not to say that there isn't strategy and stuff in here, but just I think games grew exponentially once they hit the 90s, you know, the late 80s to the 90s is where games, I think, suddenly exploded. Um, in the early 80s, these games, they're still fun, but they're sort of like, they're half an hour affairs, I feel. You know, I kind of feel like these are half hour affairs, whereas later games can become like an eight hour affair. You know, like Mario 3 can be an entire day. If you don't warp, that's a whole day of playing. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm starting. I've I've been unofficially wrapping up my thoughts here of this game. Hero, this is a book in or this is a game in the book. One thousand and one video games you must play before you die. In terms of whether this is a must play, I would say that it's definitely in terms of the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, a remarkably advanced game. And you know, if you are in the market for playing Atari games, I would definitely recommend this one. This is one, it kind of reminds me of Pitfall in that it was quite complex, only this is probably more complex than Pitfall. And actually, you know, you can get a little farther in it, there's a little more to explore. Um, you know, not, not to paint a totally negative picture of it, it is, it is quite good for an Atari game. Now in the context of, you know, games, th like these days, this is a very simple affair with pretty repetitive gameplay. So I wouldn't say necessarily that this holds up like something like Mario 3 would today. But does that mean you shouldn't play it? I don't think so. Um, I don't think this is a must play. I don't think it's sort of like such an iconic game that people can't have, have played it before. But I mean, obviously, there was something here with the concept. As I say, Pixel Junk took this basic idea and made Shooter, a, a modern shooting game um, around it, which... In fact, Shooter has its own sort of uh, inspiration, it seems, from games like Asteroids uh, and stuff in terms of its control scheme. So Shooter is almost a combination of Asteroids meets this, which if that sounds interesting to you, you should check it out. Shooter is actually, I really like that game. Um, not everyone does, but it's sort of like a hidden gem, I feel, of the PlayStation Network um, because it's a downloadable only game. 
But anyway, those are my thoughts on Hero. What do you guys think? Do you think this looks like a terrific Atari 2600 game? Do you think the Atari 2600 is something better, you know, left to our memories and not actually played these days? You know, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, and as always, guys, if you have enjoyed checking this game out with me, if you have enjoyed this video today, go ahead, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. I will be back in a couple days with a new video and a new game, and you don't want to miss out on that. So until next time, if, my friends, if you do find yourself lost in any caverns, don't just lay there helplessly like a, like a bum waiting for someone to save you. Make a, make a token effort to escape on your own accord. And otherwise, take care of yourselves. All right, guys. Peace. The only thing I do wonder about this game is if there's an actual end. A lot of these old games, they didn't really have ends, the levels would repeat forever, but this is one game where I could actually see them making some kind of boss, maybe? That would be... In fact, I don't even know if any Atari 2600 game has a boss in it. Maybe that was an invention of sort of more the Nintendo era of gaming. I wonder. Does any Atari game... Here, here's a trivia question for you guys. Does any Atari game out there have a boss, a final boss that you have to fight? Let me know. I'm, I'm really curious about that. I'm really curious.